Hey guys, it's Britt and welcome back to my channel. Today we're making whole food plant-based crackers. This is the easiest recipe. It works with literally any grain that you have in your cupboard. You just need a blender. You do not have to have a Vitamix to make this and you need an oven. And it is, I would say around three ingredients if you count water as one. Um, we're gonna jump into this. It works literally with any grain that you have. So if you have rice, if you have quinoa, if you have farro, if you have any kind of grain, it'll work. Um, I made three different kinds for this video. I made a millet, black quinoa, and an oak root cracker. And really the only thing that kind of differs is how thin or thick you like your cracker. We made kind of thicker crackers in this video. I've made thin ones in the past and really that might just mean adding a little bit extra water to your batter. You kind of want it to be pancake batter thickness and um, when you pour it and kind of evenly spread it out the thicker your batter is the more of a softer cracker you're gonna have the thinner it is the less time it's gonna take and it'll be a crispier cracker so just keep that in mind I'm gonna go all, all over that in this video um, but I really hope you guys enjoy this make sure you check out down below I'll have all the measurements written out as well as on our blog post I hope you guys will subscribe and enjoy this video Can we just take a moment to appreciate my tripod? It is two of the rolled oats containers stacked upon each other. Um, you gotta work within your budget. And just to get started, this is really simple. It's one cup of water in a blender and one and one fourth cup of whole grain. I'm using millet here. You can use any whole grain for this. You also can use any blender. You do not have to have a fancy Vitamix blender. Any blender will work. If your blender is struggling to make the batter, add a tablespoon at a time until, until you reach that it's blending well. You really want that grain to be broken up. And at the end, it should kind of look like pancake batter. Um, like I said, if it struggles, just add a tablespoon at a time. You want it to be a thicker batter. If you are going to make a thin cracker, um, you're gonna wanna spread your batter out not as thick as I am in this video. These make kind of a um, a softer cracker. Uh, so I'll explain that in a minute, but I just poured it into a measuring cup just to show you guys that it does look like pancake batter. All right, so now you can grab a baking sheet that's lined with parchment paper. And like I said, you want to make your batter kind of evenly spread out. The thinner you make it, the less time it's going to take and the crispier of a cracker you're going to get. Um, I'm making kind of thicker, I guess thicker crackers. These um, ended up more on the soft side, which is what I prefer, uh, but you could spread it out much more to make it a little bit crispier. And then these are going to go into the oven at 350 degrees for, I'm going to start it at 25 minutes and then I kind of check it every five minutes after that. Until, it's, until I know it's finished. Um, I also am adding some everything bagel seasoning to these. You can add whatever seasoning that you like. You can also incorporate it into the blender and kind of mix it throughout. I just always do mine as a topping. It's totally optional. Um, and again, if you do a thicker batter like mine, it's probably gonna take closer to 40 minutes to 45 minutes. It just depends on everyone's oven. If it's a thinner, crispier cracker, it's gonna take like 25 minutes. Um, you also can make this into pizza crust, and if you make it into pizza crust, I would say it's closer to the 25-30 minute mark. Uh, but we'll get into how to show you when it's done. Very, very easy. This went into the oven. First set of crackers, is, is it's on its way. So I rinsed out my blender. I'm making some quinoa crackers. Uh, so I have one cup of water. It's the same exact thing and one and one fourth cup of quinoa. This is black quinoa. You can use whichever grain you have at home. Again, this is so easy and it works with everything, which is what I love. And if your blender has trouble, again, add one tablespoon of water until it helps it out. You can see that my mixtures kind of get thicker and thicker as we go on, um, but you can kind of play around with how thick you like your batter to be, again, going to depend on how thin or crispy you like your uh, cracker or if you like a th softer cracker like I'm more towards go towards one with a little bit more body 
All right, this is a black quinoa, so that's why it's purple, just to give you a heads up, but it works with any of them. And that's, you want it to, to be completely mixed in, so that looks pretty good there. Just to show you the thickness, I moved it back into that measuring cup, and you can see it's a little bit thicker than the millet one, but looks great. And then get a baking sheet lined with parchment paper again, and we're doing the same thing. It is a super easy recipe and a fantastic thin pizza crust. <laughs> so go ahead and evenly, you just want to make sure it's even. That's probably the best way to make sure it all is cooked at the same time. So spend a little bit of time just to spread it out evenly. And you can add whatever seasoning you like. For this one, I went with a uh, more of a regular seasoning spice that we always tend to go to. We really like nutritional yeast, so I added some nutritional yeast to this. You can add whatever you like to it, doesn't matter. <laughs> we also added some onion powder and garlic powder. So this is kind of my neutral savory cracker that I made. And I've also made some sweet crackers with some cinnamon. Those also are a nice treat, so you can keep that in mind as well if you're trying to do kind of a cinnamon. Um, you can even use date sugar and make kind of a dessert one. But so many different options. Again, on our blog post, I'll have lots of different combinations written out. You could literally open up your spice cabinet and probably do something different each time. All right, so that went into the oven. The last one is using oat groats. So I have one cup of water, one and one fourth cup of oat groats, and blend that. Now this is the thickest one yet. So if you're using oat groats, you might need to add that tablespoon to two tablespoons of water. You want it to be really incorporated, but you'll see that this batter is very, very thick. Um, it still worked out great. I was very happy with it. And I ran out of room in my regular oven, so we had to move over to the Breville Smart Oven Air. I still baked it just like I would in the oven. It still goes for 350 degrees. Just to show you guys, it's really a thicker batter. So I scraped out of my Vitamix. And these I kind of dim I kind of made my husband's specific crackers because I put a spicy seasoning on these. I'm not a huge spice person, but Mark really likes spicy foods. So I, I found that I had a Thai seasoning blend in our cupboard from um, a local co-op that we go to and get like bulk seasonings. So I added that so it has some like turmeric and some curry I think is mixed in. It smells, it is very spicy. Uh, so these are specifically his but that's the gold spice that I put on, put on these ones. So you can see it's very thick. It's I guess more like waffle mix. <laughs> But it worked out great, so you just want to make sure, again, it's evenly spread. You can make this with rice, with um, farro, with any kind of whole grain that you have. So really, whatever you have, use. And just take a minute to spread it out. And this is really simple. And I'm going to show you how to know it's done. So again. I always set my timer for 25 minutes, and then after that I kind of check it every 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, if you're making this into a pizza crust, around 25 to 30 minutes really is all you have to do, because you want it to be soft, and you're going to bake it, and then add your sauce, and then add your, your toppings. So, you know, if you're making it a pizza crust, you don't want to go as long as we do for the cracker. Uh, I'm making a softer cracker, so these are a little bit of a thicker substantial cracker <laughs> that's what I like to say and then I bake it for around 40 minutes for all of these this the all of, all three of these took around 40 minutes and it's softer that it still breaks apart but it's not um it's not so crispy that that you can hear it like crack um and how I know it's done is that there's cracks in it that's a good sign and then it's kind of browned around the edges and I just tear it. I'm very rustic. It's just the two of us eating these. So I don't really care specifically if they're nice and fancy and cut out. But you can definitely do that. But you'll see it just kind of like breaks apart. Um, if you want it to be more of like a super snap cracker, just make the, the dough a little bit thinner. 
uh, when you go to spread it out, and then you're going to bake it for, I, I got a, a very crispy cracker by making the dough batter very thin on my parchment paper and baking it for 25 minutes. So I also have pictures of that uh, on our blog post, but I, I personally prefer a little bit of a thicker cracker, so it's a little bit softer. All right, so I'm just ripping them up. It's just going to go into an air-sealed container and just for us. Um, this is the quinoa cracker. You'll see that the seasonings got a little bit browned and the edges are brown. And then you can see the, bot the back of it holds all together. So great pizza crust idea. And again, I'm just going to tear it because you can see there's cracks in there. So that's how you kind of know it's done. Kind of check it. So I'm just tearing it. And again, it, it's, it's really, really an easy recipe. You don't need to dehydrate it. That's wonderful. <laughs> All right, so these just go into my pasta container that I will seal with a lid. Very easy. We use this for hummus, for so many different, any kind of uh, baba ganoush, any time type of dip that we make. All right, this is the oat groats. And you can see there's cracks in it. It's how I know it's done. And this was very easy to break, which is fantastic. And you can see, again, it holds up. And I put it in a separate container, so I remember that that one's a spicy one for him. <laughs> so I just ripped them up. It's super easy and convenient. Makes a wonderful pizza crust. You guys are going to love it as crackers or pizza crust, whatever you like to do. But again, I have that Thai one that's in his separate container. And then I have all the other ones. And it works with any whole grain. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's super easy. If your blender is working hard, you can just add a tablespoon of extra water at a time. But you guys will have this, this recipe memorized. It's so easy. And now you have whole food plant-based crackers. You guys will love making this so many different ways. I hope you guys enjoy the recipe. Make sure you check out our, the rest of our channel. I make whole food plant-based recipes twice a week and they're always oil-free and delicious. And so I'm gonna store these. We are definitely gonna enjoy these and I hope you guys do at home. So if you guys make them, make sure you send us a picture of it. Make sure you let us know down in the comments and make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys very soon. I hope you enjoy some really easy, hopefully plant-based crackers. I'll see you soon. Bye.